Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to Comic Book Team Up with RJ and special guest Michael Bancroft. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, how are you? Oh, yeah. How you doing? Sorry, guys. I I, I, I just had a Mike, Mike Allred on my uh, regular show on th on Wednesdays, and we just kept on talking after we were, and I was like, oh, my God, I got to go. <laughs> so There's two comic late. book guys uh, getting lost in the in the excitement no no joke no joke you know it, we, we were just goofing on on other things and talking he was like mentioning projects that he doesn't want to mention on live so zip i gotta be quiet but you know it was so much fun what a great guy what a cool guy didn't you want to hang out it's, with him it's, you... it's hard to find cool guys who want to talk comics these days so when you can get them you gotta hold on to them tight it's funny that you said that because people keep trying to draw me into their shenanigans and I, I <laughs> welcome to I'm YouTube fighting and kicking and screaming <laughs> and I gotta say I'm weak. Sometimes I fall for the bait and I get so mad at myself, you know. Yeah, so I, I see out you out there, I see you out there responding, and you know, the uh in a normal world, in a normal life, good people would respond. To what they see out there happening and the rubbish and everything, but Twitter isn't normal world. YouTube isn't normal life, and right. you know what good people would normally do: standing up for others and calling out BS. Uh, is all all that ends up happening is it just sucks time away from your life and nothing is accomplished. So, and yeah, I, I learned that lesson long ago. And I feel dirty and used, you know, like like you know. <laughs> And, and today I threw out a bunch of olive branches and I hope the people accept them with, with the, the vivid vigor that I offer them. You know, it, it, I, I truly mean it. I love comics. I've been saying it's about comics for the past couple of weeks. And I, you know, I don't want to get involved in drama. And it's somebody I had a little altercation with today was nice to me. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of these people that you show a little bit of kindness. We're, we're good. We're back again. I, I, I don't want to hold on to grudges. So it's, how are you doing, RJ? We just got to prove it. I'm still doing alive. good. Okay, I'm, I was just going to do a wellness check. I was going to send. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I'm too busy to get uh, messed up in the drama right now. <laughs> I yeah. was running to the printers today because they had a problem with one of the comics that uh, we wanted printed for the Valiant Heroes, and it, the black lines weren't showing up in it, and they had to oh, redo no. everything. So, uh, yeah, I'm too busy right now. <laughs> uh, well, it sounds like a good busy, you know, getting comics done and and. Uh, you know oh yeah and i'm i'm writing um uh, I'm, I'm working on another book which is going to be i think published on my youtube channel we're going to put up subscriber uh tier and we're going to i think publish it there i think it's 8 pages per per chapter and i'm going to publish it there just as see if um i can i can get some more people in that way oh cool uh, speaking of uh you know i i got shrine today michael rj oh, yeah. yep I know oh, of it, but Isaac I, Bell. I don't have it. It just looked phenomenal. I and know his, nothing about Isaac Bell, and we actually did a auction for Sean to help uh, Sean Arendt to um, help him out, where we sold Isaac Bell's girlfriend's art. And I can never, I don't know why her name just doesn't stick in my head, but she's really talented. Oh, oh I didn't know there was a problem. Now I feel bad. I, I just, I just saw a comic that looked cool and backed it, you know? I'm, oh, no, I don't know. This was this was that this is a while ago, and she oh. they're not involved at all or anything. It was just we did an auction because Sean hadn't had a had a um had a you know I think he had a, a death or something in his family, so we we did an auction to help him out, and she very generously uh, donated a piece to uh, to sell in that auction. So yeah. oh, you see, I, I, Mike Allred was saying that comic book people are the nicest people, you know, and and I said that's because we're all big children. <laughs> <laughs> And he, and he, and Surround he ourselves it. with toys and figures and games, and right? You know, I, 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 I just I just talked for an hour with, with the the coolest guy on the planet across the country, and he's surrounded in a room full of toys to a jackass like me in a room full of toys talking about fictional characters as if they were real people, you know, getting emotional. And now I'm talking to somebody on the other side of the world doing the same exact thing. Yeah, we're we're cool. literally kind of upside down to each other right, even though yeah. you wouldn't see it here oh, rj <laughs> lived up in the woods that he, believe it or not he actually has a tin can with a string i don't know how we can <laughs> sometimes i feel that. like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. I, I just think it's a lot of fun. You know, comic books are great. And I, I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm dwelling on this too much, but I don't, I don't want to deal with this guy doesn't like this guy and this guy doesn't like that guy. Who cares? You know, Batman can't beat up the thing. That's the only thing that's important. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Uh oh, now, now bring it on. Bring it on. You think Batman can beat the thing? <laughs> Oh, you got you got a Beatles shirt. You're a Beatles fan. Uh, no, this is a this is a threadless shirt. It's the Beatles as zombies. But I am oh. a Beatles fan, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it says "Let it." Oh, it says something. Let it be. Kill. I don't know. It says something. Yeah, like I, that. I I don't know if you know the Germs, the punk rock band, but it's the Germs as the Fantastic Four. A friend of mine. Oh, that's cool. Band. He goes, he goes, he goes, you like the germs and you like the Fantastic Four. He's going to sell exactly one of these shirts to you. You know, I was like, you got it. I'm, I'm buying this shirt. I, I, I love this shirt. So are, are you a big music fan? Yes. Yeah. Before I had kids, my wife and I, and it goes back. I, I my, The first gig I went to was I was 13 or 14 years old and I didn't really stop going. And there's a huge live music scene in Melbourne. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, my wife and I, we were out almost every week seeing some sort of concert or small gig or stadium thing. Uh, love it. Yeah, it's a big it's a big part of my life. Okay. Are you musical? RJ, do you play any instruments? Mike? No. Good heavens, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the least musical person. I am tone deaf. It's all a mystery to me. I have no oh, idea really? how anyone does any of it. Uh, I played the piano, what, what like... For a year back in the day and then i my keyboard died and i just never picked it back up again now i can't play anything lost it all i took piano lessons between the age of 10 and 15 and then i i literally went out and got a job at a supermarket and i was like i'm gonna make money you know this this, this practice <laughs> and that was I, i'm still mad that that i that i i stopped doing that yeah. I just uh, I used to torture my music teacher by playing the wrong notes and he was a World War II vet so you know <laughs> Yeah. He started complaining about shell shock and covering his ears. <laughs> I, I was t with Mike Allred. He was talking about he had a, he had an art teacher that really inspired him, and and I this isn't even a joke. This is literally the truth. My art teacher told me that you know there's always football. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I have no musical talent, and I and I and I can't draw. So it's it's amazing that I. Uh, Get still, you know, comic books are my release. Then, you know, that's the only I need. Oh, if you ever need music, where do you live, Sound Engraver? Where do you live? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I had a music teacher, and uh, I was the last when I was ten to fifteen. I was the I was the last uh, student of, of of the day, and I, I would go from eight nine o'clock, and you could just tell she was done, she was tired, and I would just be playing the wrong notes, and she's like, "Okay, all right, that was great. There's the door," you know. She, we didn't we didn't do anything it's funny it's funny you bring this up because there's a guy who reached out to me from my chat megatonic audio who's actually making music for the lucent oh wow just he just wanted to he just he's like i make music i loved your book um do you mind if i make music i'm like bring it on and it's been incredible it's been amazing i you know you just don't really know but it's it's complete, well, I, like I said, it's a complete I think mystery to me. Lucent music would be psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, I was just well, about yeah, his, his, his making a sort of cinematic kind of music. Um, uh, you know, it's very it's almost like a score. Okay. And um, and he's throwing these things at me, and uh, I was like, oh wow, you really get it. Yeah, like you put this sort of childlike sound in there when she's looking at photos from her of her father when she was a child and. Uh, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, this is great. So, yeah, he's been, you know, obviously he's just doing it on the side whenever he can. But I'm loving receiving the new tracks. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but we'll figure something out. We'll do we'll do something with it. But it's I, cool. I know, I know Tonic Bowl, who does that comic, Saving the World, he puts, like, little mm -hmm. QR codes in the corner of the pages so you can scan it while you're reading it, and it'll bring up a song. Just, just throwing that out there, you know. I don't they, know. They, you know, back when I used to uh, be on Webtoon, there were you couldn't do it just as a as a pleb like me, but some of the featured creators had the option where you could listen to music as you read these online comics. That was that was pretty cool. Maybe I could uh, do that one day. 
so let me let me ask you this people in the chat too throw in your answers we got a bunch of people in the chat when you read comics do you listen to music for me absolutely not my my, my no, music is silent. is the birds singing that's about it i'm in the middle of the woods so <laughs> i like my quiet <laughs> well, well rj can't hold the comic book and crank that that old <laughs> yeah, I, rj rj purposely went you know to go live in a cave in the middle of nowhere so <laughs> he, he, yeah, he likes the echoes of the pages turning and the bats <laughs> <laughs> oh so you you don't listen to music i sometimes i i it, depending like i'll i'll put on some music while i'm while i'm listening to, to while i'm reading a comic i don't know i just i enjoy that no when we used to play games like tabletop we would like we would play risk we'd have these epic risk sessions way back in the day and we would play you know um world of warcraft music and stuff like that it was great but yeah. no, i'm not reading no i need you know, I, I I believe that people's brains are wired differently. I have a really good friend, Shantan Jetty, who can paint and talk perfectly lucidly and amazingly with the painting at the same time. I don't work like that at all. As soon as I stream <laughs> and color, everything slows down, everything, the talking and the, the work. So I don't really do it very often. But um, I was I, just yeah, people's ask, brains work differently. What What were you doing when you drew all those skulls? <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that sort of thing if it's very tedious like that and it's just drawing the same thing over again eventually your brain does turn off and you can do whatever but yeah i can actually draw while music is on but i do notice that when i get into the zone i sort of forget that i'm listening to music and sometimes i just work in silence and i just it's very peaceful I, I do put on RJ when I need to go to sleep. I, I <laughs> he has that effect. It's that dulcet <laughs> rhythm. And then I wake up angry. I don't know why. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's JW Hughes. <laughs> Communist. <laughs> I dreamt about the culture wars again. God. <laughs> yeah. uh. Depending upon no music, if it's really engaging music, I don't know. I like, I'll if I'm rereading like a classic story, I'll put on music because I don't, you know, I already know the story. If I'm reading old Avengers from the seventies, I must have read that a hundred times. So I'll, I'll put on music. But like a, a a new comic that's like super dense that I really want to enjoy, I'll, I'll put on light music, you know, because I I, I want to concentrate. N now I I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but one one of my friends was telling me that he has that aphantasia where he doesn't have any images in his brain. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. Now. And this guy's one of the smartest people I know, but he's very mathematical. Now, I, was, I, I assume neither one of you have. I have don't. That. No, I don't have that. But I don't think there's any correlation between how your brain works and whether or not you're smart or anything. It seems to be pretty right. random. Uh, uh, who's that really famous old scientist, uh, Feynman? He used to look into this a bit himself, and he would figure out how to how to figure out how other people's brains works as well and you know he was working with the smartest physicists of the day and they all had they all worked differently and they all could do things that the others couldn't so but no i don't i don't do that i just i think i have a pretty standard brain i have it i do have an inner monologue i can see yeah. things in my mind which is good because that's how i write right I, I watch it happen in my mind before writing it down but like yeah, if you I, picture, I know a lot of people don't. Like if you picture an apple, I I, I don't know about you, but I, I I have a strong imagination. Like I I could start to taste apple. I could feel apple. You know what I mean? I and I remember explaining smell that to it. my brothers and sisters, and they told me I was yeah I could smell. It. You know they thought I was crazy. They thought nah you're lying. I was like, <laughs> to the point where I just stopped talking about it because I was like, there comes a point where you can't convince people anything. You know, so you just all right whatever. So, yeah. I had a similar thing. I, I don't know if I told this on my channel or not, but it was um, when I was in university and uh, I was trying to explain to people how you read in different manners. Because for me, I read in what I call a high speed or a low speed, which is, you know, I gear down if something's really heavy, if I'm reading philosophy or things like that. Right. And I, I do it almost phonetically. Whereas where if I'm reading something familiar, I just fly right through it. It's no, no, it's all memorization. So I was trying to explain to, to the class, you know, is it's it's like this and nobody nobody knew what i was talking about not a single person they're looking at me like i had two heads 
not. I'm a slow reader. That's all I know. Extremely slow reader. Uh, I, uh, you know, and then like I'll read. And then I'm like, okay, so like like this. I, what about inner monologues? About, oh, inner monologues. And then I start thinking about something because the sentence reminded me. And then I realized I wrote, I read four sentences, but I didn't absorb it because I was thinking about. Yeah. It. So yeah. I, you know, so I'll read the same page like two or three times because I I, I want to absorb it. You know. Yeah, there's. I think it's about thirty or forty percent of people either don't have or have some limited version of an inner monologue. I read that. I don't know if that's true, but. It seems to be something that keeps popping up where everyone's surprised. I, Vaz Vaz just brought up an interesting thing. Fast reading comic books is a crime. Do you ever find yourself, you just read a comic book too fast and you're like, I'm not sure if I, and, and you go back. Like, I was just listening to uh, the, the ink. What is it? You know, the one with Eric Kennedy on it, the ink something podcast. And they were talking about that, how some comics you read them almost too quickly but that they're sort of designed like that they're, they're very uh, sparse on the writing and i guess it's just it's just for the you know depending on the comic some some you read you know they're just naturally dense others and i've had this before where the kind of comic it is say an action superhero comic and then the art is misaligned so it's the art is not appropriate for that genre oh, that it's, the crazy. art is 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 too it's almost like bernie wrightson style intricate and but it's not supposed to be like that it's supposed to have a lot more you know of a fast pace to it and i and i just remember thinking wow what a complete waste of that artist's time because this would have taken forever and the pace of the story is really quick. So I'm tearing through these pages and every page turn is, you know, another 40 hours of art that I'm just completely glossing over. So, yeah, that's another thing, I guess, in comics that, you know. Nick acts that he has music in his head all the time. It never stops. Nick, that's not music. Those are those are, are geese honking. That's what you hear. <laughs> Constantly honk, 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 geese and this this always makes has anybody thought about the roman empire this week i got a big kick out of that meme everybody's I, I, my degree is in roman history so i constantly think about the roman empire and I'm every week every day you know and, and i'm getting mad that yeah. i'm i'm losing information because my, my, you know what i mean like i go to work I'm, I'm 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 working construction and i'm not thinking about the roman empire and i'm forgetting it so just to prove that i'm thinking about the roman empire i just picked up these two books you know, facts about the Roman Empire. Yeah. So I yes, was thinking I, about the Roman Empire this morning. I, <laughs> yeah, I I watched I watched Gladiator about a week ago, and ever since I've been getting recommended Russell Crowe and then uh Roman history sort of you know, intellectual stuff on YouTube. So and I've been clicking it because I'm a sucker for all that stuff. Uh, yeah, so I've been pretty heavily into the Roman Empire for a week now. Yeah, same with me. I was watching uh, uh, questions on ancient Egypt this morning while I was working. So, <laughs> oh, we probably watched the same video. I, I watched that one as well. <laughs> I, I I know RJ is big into mythology. Uh, Mike, Mike, are you into mythology also? Oh yeah, yeah, and I've I've interwoven all of that into my story as well, big time. Yeah, I I, I think I started learning about all that stuff in high school we actually in literature the first year of literature was mostly greek mythology yeah I and i just found it so fun and it's just been a kind of a pet interest ever since uh since then learned more about like sumerian mythology and uh you know roman and um pre pre-roman england and post-roman england and all that sort of stuff see i i i'm into all that i mean i'm not an expert but oh no no I enjoy no. it I, and i and i know you rj you're you're into uh, celtic mythology yeah well celtic and uh, norse and roman and greek i mean uh, just all over europe but uh, i don't go very far back into the egyptian and the the sumerian is a, a little bit outside my wheelhouse which is what michael is talking about for the lucent he has he has his characters there uh, I think in that mythology, is it not? Yeah, Gilgamesh. Yeah, Nubhishtam. Yeah, it's funny. I was just talking to my wife about, you know, she, uh, 
she's talked she, my, my wife is like rediscovered religion and she's rereading the bible and we would talk about noah's ark and of course me being a one of those guys actually you know so i'm talking about <laughs> you know yeah well and it's not only sumeria it's everywhere all over the world there's some kind of flood myth which and you know it's funny because i was just re-watching uh, graham hancock talk about that and i was like that is so interesting that this flood myth and then the kind of rebuilding of society is present everywhere um it's really it's really intriguing stuff it does it it, it learning about all that stuff and hearing about it really kind of sparks the imagination for me i you know i was about to say with with the i the only mythology i well not the only but the celtic mythology i i'm not very adept at because i just have such difficulty pronouncing the names and i find if i can't pronounce the names i i can't draw a connection you know, like Greek mythology, Roman mythology, I guess as a European descendant, it, 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 it clicks. And even Sumerian mythology, the names aren't too difficult to pronounce. But I find Aztec mythology, I have like a, a better connection with. I can understand it better than, than Celtic. And it's and my, my grandmother, you know, grew up in Ireland. And I just can't, you know, the, the Welsh, I, I I wonder if like the Welsh people just pretend that it's a language. Like they just pull it, like, <laughs> you know. Uh. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. It's not real. If they're you place know. names that are 200 letters long. I know. And there's no vowels. Like, how the hell? And and it's got like a W and R, R and a Y, and it's pronounced like Carol or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And you have DH is a W sound and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a new name, Johnny Five. Oh, Bible says they were in the Ark longer than a year, not just 40 days. Ark could be a spaceship. That would be goes off, goes off to Mars. There's Let's, a story right there. There you go. That's that's issue three. Right, lucent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Someone <laughs> asked me actually, are there, are there are there any aliens in the lucent? Because I had a shooting star coming in. They're like, I hope it's not aliens. Like, no, there's no aliens. I I, I know RJ based. story about about role playing games and Dungeons Dragons, but uh, you know, I I I forget if I asked you. I I always tend to ask people this question. But when I was playing Dungeons Dragons, there was a book called The Deities and Demigods, and it was just you know, a couple of pages on North mythology, a couple of pages on Sumerian mythology, and that they they did Cthulhu and they did you know Michael Moorcock's El Elric of Melnibone and uh, and why can't I Frank the gods of Lankmar from uh, why can't I think of his name Fatford Grey Mouse and I became obsessed with this book so that like like I'm I'm talking like twelve years old me going to the library and pulling out mythology books because I had to know about all of these characters that were in my D and D book and I. I that that book is as hokey as it's a, that book changed my life. You know, there was me before the DDs and demigods. Now, now my question yeah, to you, are you into D and D or anything like that? No, I never got into it, and I don't know if it was a time thing. It, it, I don't even know if it was. Well, you have to have friends. Massive here. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, none of my friends were into it. That's for sure. <laughs> um, and but I've since seen more people get into it, uh, but you know, on the fringe here as an adult, but no, I don't remember. It wasn't this massive thing that everyone was doing in school or anything like that. It just, I, it just wasn't around. I didn't hear about it until much, much later. Never really into it. I was more into the, at that age, I was reading books about vampires and werewolves and stuff like that. So yeah, oh, not yeah. so much the, um, Demi Gorgon. <laughs> whatever it is sorry demi gods well that drives me nuts that the demi gorgon is now this thing from stranger things when that's not the demi gorgon and then my wife goes john that's the demi gorgon for now on more people know that as the now demi it is yeah, yeah. exactly yeah perception has become reality like there really is a demi gorgon but geez because <laughs> even gary gygax's demi gorgon was not well, RJ, you probably know more as as, as a theologian. The demigorg, what that was like a bastardization of a Greek term for demi urge or something. That I don't really know a whole lot about, except for the fact about, about the Gorgon myth, which is um, uh, they were born out of a, a titan who was crushed by a mountain. Yeah, the, the Gorgon. The, it means like shining eyes or something like that from Greek mythology. The Gorgons. They were, they were the three Grey Sisters, the Fates, the Norns. They always the, these, the, the, you know, the hag, the maiden, the crone. That was all, mm -hmm. 
you know, pre pre European Greek Greek mythology. That that's what I wrote. So yeah, this is a pretty heady talk. I I I, I talk Batman with my guy, and over here we're talking philosophy and and, and mythology. Well, that's the way I roll, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what I'm more interested in at the moment, anyway. So oh, okay, that's good. Uh, that's good. Out. And you said that you're putting Sumerian mythology in, into your book. You want to tell tell me more about that? That Sumerian yeah, so mythology gonna, is the most popular. So mythology. my book. Cool. My book starts pre all that, uh, pre Sumeria, but there's hints in it that it's sort of like on the cusp of that civilization coming into being. And then in this book, the one I'm finishing up now, Painted Death, it actually starts with a 10 page, uh, I guess, prologue. I mean, it's connected to what's happening in the story of um, Gilgamesh you know, going on his adventure, whatever, his journey to. Uh, seek out the 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 only guy remaining after the flood, uh, the Pishtun, the guy who's figured out immortality, right. and um, you know it's it's about him going on that journey, and then basically you know finding out that it's not just you know th this sort of thing comes at a cost, and it the cost is it might be m more than what you're willing to pay, but yeah, you know. And in, in future books, I'm kind of travel forward through history from that point on to um, Akkad and uh, various other places all around that area. So, yeah, it's very much integrated and entwined with the whole story because some of these characters, because there is immortality in my book, some of these characters are you know, 6,000 years old. And what a story I have an they interesting have to tell. question about that before you move on. Because of your color palette that you use, it would be very interesting to see what you would do with underwater uh, scenes. And if I remember correctly, the Gilgamesh uh, myth does have a fairly large section where he goes underwater to try to find this plant, which is something to do with immortality. I was wondering if you had any plans of, of putting that in the book. No. Well, it's it's really, it covers the, the death of uh, Enkidu and the journey to Utnapishtim. That's really it. And 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 it's my interpretation of it. It's not as it is in the book. I take some things like in Gilgamesh, he meets actual people who are scorpions. Whereas right. Scorp I what like I do with, scorpions. when I integrate history, sorry, John, um, when I integrate history into the Lucent, I put, a, I try to take the myth out of it and say, okay, what is the myth based on? You know, like all these, I want to, I want to present a thing that all these myths are based on something that actually happened. Well, what would have actually looked like? So instead of actual scorpion men, instead I made these big colossal statues of scorpions. Um, and then yeah, so his journey to um, Utnapishtim, and then he uh, Utnapishtim makes him take a, a sort of a test to see if he's worthy to have immortality. That's kind of where it ends for me. I, it's just I a like little snippet. You know, I'm of like two schools when it comes to like mythology and deconstructing mythology. Like, the kid in me wants to see scorpion monsters. You know, how freaking cool is that to see scorpion <laughs> monsters? But yeah. I also love, I'm, I'm trying to remember his name now, but he, he uh, Robert Graves, Greek mythology, where he breaks down what it probably was when, you know, when he's talking about the, the centaurs, he, he say it probably was guys who were so good on horseback. That the Greeks used to say, yeah, they're one. That you makes know, sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then later on, it, the telephone game, they become sent to, and the original werewolves were guys who, like a tribe that killed wolves and used the wolf skins, you know, and yep. they had vicious fighting tactics. You know, it, it kind of takes the, dra dra the drama out of it. But at the same time, like, wouldn't it be cool to make like a, a comic based on like real realism? Like, I, I don't know if you know the comic Age of, uh, Age of Bronze, where they they did like a realistic approach of, of the uh, the Trojan War, no gods, you know, what 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 it really would have happened if it was real Greek history. And I, I love that concept, but I also want to see a Greek Trojan War with Achilles and 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 and, and Athena and all these people battling, you know what I mean? So I well I, I feel like there's been there's been plenty of that. Like there there have been plenty of retellings of all these old stories. Um I've got a world a story that i built and i i love the idea of someone reading my story and the, and recognizing these things 
in the world that they exist in. These are these are myths that exist in our world. And so when you read my book, there's always this feeling of this could actually have happened. This could be the history of the world I know. I just I'm not aware of okay. this secret history of it. I, I I like stories that do that. So it's it's just like it's all kind of it happened, but you weren't just aware of it. Um, I like to bring that into my story, and that's that's why I like to play with the histories and stuff. But also at the same time, it has to be grounded in. There has to be some kind of cutoff point where, I'll, okay, people can teleport and shape shift and dream walk and, you know, do all this sort of stuff. But they, I draw a line at scorpion men for me. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's ridiculous. Somewhere. Where it's, <laughs> exactly. You know, various similitude. Uh, people yeah. will accept up to a certain point. Like p- part of it, like. Like when 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 these uh, historians or I, I, whatever the term is, people who study mythology, uh, when when they turn it into like a real story, I, I, I do get a little disappointed. I, I think if Robert Graves said like the like Theseus went to Crete, you know, and went through the labyrinth and everything, and they're saying the labyrinth was probably just like like a hedge bushes and, and the Minotaur is like a statue to Baal, like the you know that people were sacrificed to. Like you went in there and never came out because he was sacrificed and i'm like okay that's actually kind of scarier but it's less awesome than thinking of a, a monster guy running around with an axe you know and theseus is fighting it you know well you you could it doesn't have to be um it doesn't have to be less dramatic and less exciting in in my book for example and i always thought this ever since i was a kid it, learning about religions and everything and you know so for me, you know, growing up in Australia, we learn about Jesus. And here's Jesus going around to all these places, doing all these miracles. And it's just sort of part of the, the day. And, you know, and if you read other parts of the Bible, there were all kinds of other miracles happening. And then I'm looking around my world, and it's just people going to work and nothing really interesting happening. And this. So I always wondered, well, why did all this cool stuff only happen in the past? And that, you know, that is actually in, in my book as well, in that this cool stuff did was actually so much more normal and part of everyday life. This crazy, what we would consider as miraculous, you know, things happening that defy belief. And that was sort of first it was stamped down and kept under wraps and secret by, a, you know, a secret organization dedicated to keeping all that hush hush so that they can kind of control and keep it to themselves so that that sort of explains why we don't see really any of that anymore it sometimes does leak out but it's always explained away and that that's true with today you know there's mysteries happen all the time and people don't really know the full explanation but i guess they just sort of assume well there must be a real explanation but maybe there isn't at least not in in my world it's just like are, are you a Tolkien fan very much yes so have you read the similarian that that's the same thing like the, the I, first age is all magic and mythological yeah. and as we get closer to the third age it it turns like more like historical as you know yeah there's less less magic and you know and, and at the pre-first age the gods were walking around on the earth talking to yeah. people interacting yeah well in the bible originally you know god used to come down and wrestle people so yeah you yeah. know there was it's quite different to the uh to the new testament yeah i i i did my best to get through silmarillion i don't think i finished it oh uh it was it was a slog for me i mean it, i was it's a, a lot tough younger. read but it's a rewarding read yes yeah I, I, you know what i do now i i just watch a ton of um lore videos so they give you snippets on who the characters were and it's someone else who's done all the work <laughs> to go through all the appendices and the Silmarillion and all his letters and everything and his interviews to piece together. Okay. Who is, I don't know, Glorfindel or someone, you know, don't, don't get me started on Glorfindel. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> RJ, are you, I, I, I don't know if I ever asked you, are you, are you a, you're a Tolkien fan? Yes. Well, um, Again, my brother was the huge Tolkien fan. He read everything, and he would just leave the books lying around. I tried to read the Cimmerillion, 
like time and time again when I was a kid. But now, now I got friends who are like my brother. They can just quote the entire thing for me. So if I have a question, I just go ask them. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I just remember like one, one of my friends was getting mad at me. Like, why didn't the Eagles just fly to, 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 to the Mortar? And I, I didn't really have a good answer other than that ruins the story, you know? So I was like, all right, it's time to read the similarity. And, and then I remember, it must have been like two years later, I just sat him down and said, this is why he's like, it, you did research for two years? I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not kind of crazy, crazy person. Yes, exactly. Just so I could. Like like Gandalf did. Just went off yeah. and researched the ring for a couple of years. It's, it was funny because before I read the similar, I didn't have a beard. And when I was done, I looked at I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're John the Gray. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tra yeah. <laughs> I'm transformed. So uh, Sound of Grave is fascinated with your mug. Is, is, is that yeah, I saw that. I got this in. No, it is not. No, it's the exact opposite in Australia. Yeah, that's it's what I it's uh, please tread on me, actually, in Australia. So, yeah, same uh, no, I got this. I got this at a, at a Bucky's in um, St. Augustine when I was over in, in Florida. You're doing the Comic Con. Yeah, yeah there was it was we were on our way, I think, on our way back um, to the uh, the Tampa, Tampa Bay. So we stopped at a Bucky's and I saw that and I was like, I gotta have that. Um, when we drive, my wife's like, oh, Bucky's, you know, like she doesn't even care where we're going as long as we're going to a Bucky's. <laughs> it was great. Do you have it was amazing. Like I got so much stuff. What's that? Do you have anything like a Bucky's in Australia? No. No, we have 7 Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> no, we have nothing like that. Everything is bigger in the States. Everything. Yeah. Well, people. And then anything that's big here, it comes from the States. People don't realize how big, like outside of America, how big the states are you know like yeah i had that feeling entering and and i think it's the it's i i think because i don't think i've been to india or china I've been to hong yeah. kong but uh it's the it's the country that i was like i was entering it's like there's more people in this country than any country i've ever been in there's more people uh, in know, Florida than australia <laughs> yeah probably there's 25 million australians so i don't know how many are in florida um, but there's yeah, it's 25 million in Australia, over about the same sized land, at least the, the continental US. Um, right, and, so, and don't like 90 percent of them live on, live on the the coast. Yeah, yeah. Like the, oh, well, it's it, actually not on the coast. It's on it's on the bottom right. So from the south to there of the coast, that's about 80. That's about 80 percent of the population. There's a couple of other spots on the coast. And over on in Perth, and then the rest is very scattered in the middle. It's not many. Yeah, I. Before you mentioned, uh, you know, you learned about Jesus in Australia. I got to ask you: in, Does Australian Jesus, instead of turning wine into water into wine, does he turn water into beer? <laughs> Some lager? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's the same Jesus. Uh, I know Canadian. Uh, it's Jesus funny. Water you you know, it's funny. They never. Uh, they never. Aussieified Jesus. I've never seen that because I've seen in the states. I've seen you know that Jesus where it's like hey you know like that. Well, that that's, I've that, never that, seen like a Jesus with a looking like Steve Earle or anything like that. Yeah, that 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 that's a what's his name, uh, Kevin Smith. You know from from his movie. You know the the the, the buddy the buddy Christ. Mm. You know, yeah. That, I I I would just love to see a buddy Muhammad. You know, you'd never do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta go into. You gotta go live like RJ if you do that. Yeah, I'll yeah. never find yeah. you. I, I guess. Yeah, I guess my joke cut out. Canadian Jesus turns water into maple syrup. Yeah, <laughs> I would appreciate that. I do like some maple syrup. Oh, so, um, I, I, the, what is uh, somebody had brought up the weather? You, you know, you're, you're off. Uh, in Australia, for those of you who do, do not know, you're in Australia. I'm in New York. RJ is somewhere in the wilds of Canada. And uh, it's been raining. Today's like the first nice day. And, of course, I went back to work after six weeks off, and it was freaking raining for six weeks. I planned on doing so much stuff, and I got nothing done. What What is it? Is, is it cold? It's warm there now, right? You're on the other side. It's getting colder. We're just coming out of winter. Oh, okay. you're just coming out of oh, okay. Sorry, just coming out of summer. Sorry, we're just coming out of summer. We're going into winter. Oh, so everything is flipped. So and not only are the is the are the so it's it's this exact opposite. So if it's if it's winter where you are, it's summer where we are. If it's 
autumn where you are, it's spring where we are. And um, not only is it flipped like that, but it's flipped north to south. So right. north, tropical, now south is temperate. And I live in the south where it's temperate, so we get all the seasons. Up yeah, north, your, your winter north, probably doesn't go below 40, does it? <laughs> uh, well, I, yeah, not really. I didn't. I think that's around, I think zero degrees for us is around 37. 33. No, 33. Yeah, oh, it, you guys, it doesn't, you guys it really doesn't get much lower than that. Yeah, that and well, there, there are, it does snow here, but mostly in the mountains. Um, it, it has snowed in the cities, but it that's like a, you know, two times a, a century sort of situation. Now, now I got to ask, because now I'm curious. Christmas is, is, is a summer holiday for you then? Yes. Yes. Is it weird to see all these American specials with snow and, and No, it's it's funny because you just grow up with it. It's all you know. It's just it's and everyone understands it. They call that standpoint theory in social you probably know that, RJ. In social justice circles, they call um they call this phenomena of being a minority um in a you know in a in a culture standpoint theory where you view the culture from your perspective and as Australians we we grow up on American culture through movies and television um, and we you know most of us are European heritage so when the Europeans came here they brought the winter Christmas to Australia and they remember this was he said they were suffering in you know full winter outfits with a fire on no air conditioning obviously back in the 1800s uh, doing a doing a winter Christmas in Australia when it's you know 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we don't do that anymore, thankfully. We have summerfied Australia, but we we still we still you know kids will draw um, snowmen and snowflakes and sleds and everything for Christmas. Um, you know we'll hang that stuff on our tree. It's just we're in shorts and t-shirts on Christmas Day. It's yeah, you know, just is what it is. Now, I, now I got it again. Made me think about this. Would that would that be like a treat to pack up your kids and bring them to New York for Christmas and actually experience? Oh, oh yeah, it's probably a number one kind of thing that most Australians would love to do is have a white Christmas. It's just completely foreign to them. Oh, it, wow. It's it's like something from the movies, you know. Yeah, it's like it's romantic thing. and magical. Yeah. Yeah. Fairy tale. Exactly. It's. Yeah, that would be. Sick. Um, because even where it snows here in Australia, it's not going to be snowing in December. Right. It'll be snowing in July and August. Oh wow! So, and I guess I guess Easter is is a, is chilly then. Uh, either or. It's it is a little chilly at the moment, but it's pretty it's pretty nice. It'll be fine, I think. Yeah, you you you're not gonna have a white Christmas, even if it snows in New York. You're gonna have a sludgy. Disgusting. <laughs> I Ooh. saw Home Alone too. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out, outside of the outside of the five boroughs, you come to our island, you know, you have a white Christmas, and, and, you know, up by RJ, where it's, you'll you'll have a. You know, well, a I my my wife is French, and her parents live in um, officially one of the most beautiful villages in France. There's 110 of them, and they get like a sign and everything. And one year we went there for Christmas, and we got a white christmas pure white snow you know it was like oh, out of the hallmark like a, card yeah it must look like a kincaid painting you know it did and this village is you know there's a there's a there's a battlement that's a thousand years old and next to that is a palace that's 300 years old and you know all the streets are, uh in this you know french provincial style with the snow falling and everything it was pretty crazy yeah my, my, we, my wife for my 50th birthday she she treated me to a, a trip to uh, iceland in and uh from my birthdays in in december so we went between my birthday and christmas so we just missed christmas but it was gorgeous because it's dark there and it's cold there so they make a big deal about the lights so you know with, with yeah. the of it constantly being dark it was like a, a kincaid painting with you know christmas lights everywhere because that's what they got to do you know plus the electricity is cheap there with all the geothermic energy so the whole city of Reykjavik is just covered with lights and then i learned about the yule cat which i i just became fascinated with i didn't know anything about 
You know, they, they, they celebrate Christmas very differently all over the world. All these little strange traditions, these things that you take granted for that I think I think we do mostly the same thing as Americans, uh, traditions, but definitely not all over Europe, not in France, not in Germany, not in Spain. They're all quite different. So, yeah, because we are sort of half French, half Aussie, we do things a little differently here oh, as well. Really? Oh, you're talking about your particular household? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, because Australia famously has the the, the the British connection. And you said you have a lot of uh, American influences. Don't you? Don't, do you have a lot of Oh, yeah. It used to be. It used to be more British. There used to be a law. And I don't know if it still exists. It probably doesn't. I think they probably just got rid of it when people kind of went off free-to-air television. But there used to be a law that said that a certain percentage of content on television has to be australian made which was actually great because we used to have these really cool dramas and comedy shows and variety shows and everything and now a lot of that has gone away or it's just not important in society anymore so we now in terms of the kind of culture that we consume it's pretty much the same everything that you're familiar with i'm probably familiar with occasionally you get some regional stuff that i've never heard of or just for whatever reason, it it didn't make it here. Uh, there are still some cultural differences, but they're so slight now at this point. I feel like, you know, I had no culture shock at all going to the States. It just felt like, you know, Australia was just another state of the US in that sense. And I was I just had to travel a really long way to get there and everyone talks funny. Oh, well, Wilfred was great. I got to say, I, I haven't seen the Australian version, but the American version, oh my God. God, I recommend that show to anybody, but it it will twist your guts. It's it's pretty disturbing, in, in, but funny at the same time. It's funny that you said that because uh, you know I grew up in New York. I I, I moved out to uh, to uh, Albuquerque for for a couple of years. I, I moved to San Francisco, and I also lived in San Diego, and I visited a bunch of friends in Florida. With the exception of the temperature. It's, it's the same place in America. There's strip malls. There's all the same restaurants. You know, there's all the same fast food. You know, like, I I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird or whatever, but I, I kind of remember, like, things were, like, more uh, localized a, a, as a kid. But uh, everything is a strip mall here. So, yeah. If, the same so, thing is happening here. So if I went to Australia, I, I know you don't have Burger King. You have Happy Jacks. So, but other Hungry than that, Jacks. Happy Jacks sounds good, though. But Hungry Jacks, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's still worth coming, oh, but I would love yes, to you, you might, you might see that a lot of the same things are here as well. Uh, like it, I mean, obviously, yeah, we, we do have slightly different things and actually that's a really fun uh, kind of whole sub genre on YouTube of Americans coming to Australia and talking about little quirks and idiosyncrasies and stuff like that. Um, but I don't, I don't think it would be a, a big culture shock. It's definitely not like going to Germany, for example. Yeah. Well, well France, I mean, well, we, we which is a have lot the same language, which is, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. I, RJ, when I went to my, my, my brother-in-law lives in Toronto and we go to visit him every once in a while, it's going to sound weird, but like everything is the same, but yet I feel like it's like a slight frequency off. You know, I'm, I'm totally aware that I'm in a different country, even though Toronto is, 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 might as well be America. Like same I, same thing when I went to Ireland. It was the exact same thing. It was like, you know, it's takeaway instead of takeout. And it's like, that's not quite right. <laughs> but it's the same thing, right? When this, I went to, sorry, go on. No, well, I was yeah. just gonna say I was watching a, a video <laughs> that said that um 400 people in Russia were arrested last year for posts they made on social media. And three and a half thousand in the UK were arrested and charged for posts they made on social media, as in like saying the wrong thing. And I think that's really the sort of more political and philosophical and ideological is the main difference you'll find that's between Australia and America. So it's the main definitely one. the uh, "Don't tread on me" mug is not something you see in Australia. Oh yeah, yeah. this is like this is anti-Australian essentially. 
I mean, it, it's it's the this was all exposed during COVID. The just the Crazy. absolute boot lickedness of the general Australian population. I had no idea because I I don't know why I don't know how, but I kind of grew up, and it was funny when I originally became politically aware. I sort of I gravitated towards the left, which is so funny now. I gravitated towards the left because of freedom of speech and anti-censorship and anti-war and anti-corruption. And it seems so laughable today. Right. Um, and maybe I was deluded even back then. And we're talking like the year 2000 or something. Um, maybe I was deluded back then uh, anyway. But, um, but I really dove into that stuff, like John Locke and, and the, you know, the the american revolution and all that sort of stuff i love history so i really got into all that stuff and i really believe in it and then to realize oh i always knew that australia was a nanny state i always knew that but to realize it's a full-on police state during covid was a shock you, and you, your, uh, your politicians were like gleefully locking up people for for resisting getting oh yeah shot that didn't oh yeah and and there's no escape either. I I yeah. remember hoping that maybe we could get some sort of resistance, and they were making camps yes. to put people away, and they were they were taking them away out of their houses and putting them in camps. And um, I remember watching the so we've had this socialist quasi uh, communist government here in my state for. 15 years now so they have like total power and the the opposing party the conservatives are just they're not they're really non-existent at this point and i remember the conservative leader in response to them taking people away and locking them up in camps his response was not that that's a bad thing to do we advocate not doing that his his response was if this government had any kind of competence, they would have had this up and running two months ago. They've really dragged their feet on this, you know. Da, da, da. And he's pointing out all the reasons why they haven't. They're, run, they're not running the camp competently. And I mean, this is now like, who are you going to vote for? Like, it's, it was absolutely and, and, crazy. And, and your, your your buddy New Zealand, they they were even worse from what I yeah. from what I read. Yeah, it's really disheartening. Yeah, it's really not to see over over by RJ up in up in Canada you know and my wife she says the Canadians aren't political by nature she says you know we're, we're kind of like what you know just who cares well let's let's vote let them deal so she's actually been losing friends back in Canada because of like her stance with, with she's like I can't believe this locking people up forcing people to get she could be it would be one thing if you got this shot and boom it stops but like it doesn't you know I don't know. I, I I'm probably saying more than I should be saying. <laughs> well, I, I I understand completely, and um, yeah, and it, it was it was a crazy dark time, but we you know I found out so much about the country yes. that I'm living in. My country and, too, you know, and, uh, and RG's country. And yes, Nick X, you already jumped the gun. I'm I'm inviting myself to Australia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we'll have a we'll have a, a Barbie. There's yeah, no well, there's no shrimp on the Barbie. It's uh, more like snags, which snags? sausages. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got me at snags. I, I can't eat shellfish. <laughs> um, I, I I wanted to bring this a little bit back into comic books and maybe a little bit in, into the drama, but uh, I I I looked at like this whole comics gate and everybody as as like the French Revolution of comics. Like we we got away from Marvel, we got away from DC. Yep. I can't help but feel that we are now in the uh, in, in in what are they the reign of terror era of the French Revolution, <laughs> where, yeah. where we're all Marat like trying to cancel like we can't get them killed because we've evolved, but we can destroy them. Like I I, I never heard of this guy Piscator until a couple of days ago, and he may or may not be disgusting. I don't know. I'm not following it. So if you know if anybody, I'm not sympathetic to the guy. I literally don't know because I don't want to know. But the glee in some of these people's posts in their eyeballs when they talk about it on YouTube, I, I can't help but think of this guy sitting in the bathtub writing letters to get people killed. You know, this, 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 and, and I don't like it. Like, if this guy is a piece of 
garbage, which he may be, I don't know. Again, I'm not following it because it hurts my stomach and I don't want to know. Let the authorities deal with it. Like, just, I don't know. Why do we talk about this? I, I know it's human nature, but I don't know. I, I want to talk Mike Galloran about, like, could Batman beat up the thing, which we all know he can't. <laughs> it's yeah i think i think you hit it on the head it is sort of human nature this is not it's not even an internet thing it gets accelerated by the internet it's it gets right. spread so much easier through social media but yeah it's i mean go back to any point in history this is happening people are getting railroaded there's kangaroo courts there's um well you guys you invented know, that right kangaroo courts politi <laughs> political uh smear campaigns in 1984 you know there was the two minutes hate and yeah you see this you see this every day on the internet and the thing with commiscate was you know it took this resentment and this energy that had been bubbling up for years that there was something really wrong happening in comics and you know everyone sort of moved forward with that um fast forward what are we like seven years it's become pretty clear that a lot of the energy surrounding it is not as much focused on the comic books that are either the critique of them in Marvel or the creation of them, but it's sort of, it's gained its own steam and momentum right. um, in and of itself. So, uh, you know, and, and if you enjoy that, my, my philosophy is look, if that's what you want, go and enjoy that. Yeah, have fun. I'm not going to say anything against you. I'm going to be over here. Because I'm, I, I, I like to talk about cool comics and read yeah. them. Stuff. That's what I'll be doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of strayed cool. in this conversation from comics because I kind of got fascinated with the Australia Christmas and things like things I never really. Thought <laughs> you know, about. it happens every time I go on to a stream, which is good. I, I really like doing it because, in as much as I complain about it, I still love my country. I think it's a fantastic country well, full the, of yeah. mostly I, I, fantastic people. And, and I think you should you be patriotic and love your country, you know, but there's a difference between loving your country and loving your government, you know? And, yeah. and I, I do think, I, I remember like somewhere around 15, 16 years old, I started to have this disconnect of like, oh, go government isn't like this great thing. Like, you know, I, I went to a Catholic school. You got I, to it sooner than I did. So well done on that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've never been a joiner. I've, I've never been a joiner, uh, you know, it, it, and that's why, like, even when I, I'm going to pull rank here and say, like, I was comics gate at the beginning. Like, I was sending Zach, your boy Zach, insider information when I was an electrician over at Marvel, when, you know, before before Jawbreakers came out. So, so I was there. For, but even then, I started to say, I don't like this label because now this label forms a team and then the team forms rules. And then the Rikata, rules, you know what I mean? Nick Rikata has talked about this a bunch oh. that anytime you get an online community, um you get the good and the bad with that and there's you know inevitably an in group and out group forms which can be fine if it's benign but if ever there you know becomes a sort of a dogma attached to it uh, or, you know it's a, a mob kind of forms up yeah that can you know it can go awry and i think we've seen that play out here and there people getting unfairly smeared as one thing or another um yeah it's that's but again that's sort of the downside to it all there has been a lot of upsides to it in terms of you know cross promotion and and coalescing people around an idea and stuff like that i've always been of the of the mind take it or leave it i've never been a, you got to be cg only kind of guy i never and even when that was really kind of a popular idea which um was sort of around the kind of war campaign time I was never for that. I always wanted to hang out with people who love comics, whether yes. you say you're comic skater or not. It didn't really bother me. Um, you know, as long as you're not like openly hating me because of my associations, um, well, then I, yeah, you know. It, I was on a panel on Monday night, and I, I'm not mentioning names because that's not what it, it's about. But somebody asked me, "Do you think this guy's comic is going to be any good?" And it's somebody that's you know, somebody that's been badgering me online. I'll leave it at that. And I said, well, I hope I hope it's good. You know, and everybody kind of like looked at me. I guess they wanted me to attack this guy. But I'm like, doesn't matter. If the comic's good, the comic's good. I don't particularly like Mark Wade, But I got to admit, Kingdom Come was a great comic. The guy is a talented comic book writer. He's, he's a annoying man baby. But 
what why do I want to cheer a comic to be bad? Just you know what I mean? Like and I'm hoping that this person has the maturity to like my comic if he feels it's good and not like slam it on their channel saying, oh, it's crap because I don't like this. But if this person, again, I'm not mentioning names, puts out a comic book that's actually pretty good, I will invite them to come on my channel because it's about comics. It's not about the personalities. You know, I, I'm already biased towards your comic, Mike, because, you know, it looks good and I've already talked to you. You know what I mean? So, yes, I'm you. <laughs> A little bit of human. Well, this is the this is the YouTube thing. That that's that's what happens when you sell comics on YouTube. Is um, you sort of it's the old salesman thing. You know, you're not selling the thing; you're selling right. yourself. Absolutely, uh, yes. and I agree with that. And yeah. so there is a lot more of that happening on YouTube than anywhere else in any other social media. It's more people who are who are supporting a person rather than the book, which can be a good thing. Uh, if 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 it if it draws people to buy something that's really good that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten, but it can also end up being a negative thing if it means that a lot of people's introduction to comic is a really bad one. So yeah. you know, I've always advocated that the you know the the only way we're ever going to make any kind of difference in this um, culture war, or whatever the, the landscape, is if we people start putting up really amazing books. Because that's what moves move. That's what moves culture forward. That's what happens in music. You right. know, it wasn't the the crap bands that led the you know the kind of musical um, uh, taste and everything of the last hundred years. It was all these amazing bands so that came up. You make a really excellent point, and I, it's, and I'm starting to feel a little guilty that I haven't been talking about comics in the past hour that much. So let's. So, what what are some great comics that you like? You know, non non some you know indie, indie comics. Yeah, well, I'll before well, oh, in just one second there, I got to take off because my stream was supposed to start five minutes ago. Oh, okay. So I, Sorry, I'll I'll bail. I'm no not problem. talking about I, Valiant then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you go ahead and be and bash my book while, while I leave. No, I, would, yeah. <laughs> I will see both of you later. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Well, thanks, thanks, RJ. And I'm sorry yeah, if RJ. I'm giving a bit of word in edgewise. I, 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 I'm turning into such a blovicator. <laughs> I'll use the word Mark I'll, I'll would. But yeah, I just got this the other day. Science, silence, do good. Mm -hmm. It's about a nineteen-year-old Benjamin Franklin, and it, it, it's a part of my own American history that I didn't know about. I mean, yeah, it's science fiction, good. but but the whole he 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 wrote letters in his brother's newspaper under the pen name Silence Do Good as a forty-year-old uh, woman widower to, to critique society. So I, I laughed when I read this. I said, oh my God, Benjamin Franklin was the first American troll and trolling is now an established American tradition. So, you know, I, I, I he was a troll. But yeah. So uh, would you recommend, what, what comic do you have to recommend? Any, any indie comics that you've read that you just don't think get enough love? And no fair mentioning the Lucent right now. We all know that's going to be that's great, and it's going to be great. Well, a lot of them are getting love. I'll shout out. I'll shout out Battle Brick Road by Eric Weathers, which yeah. is is a fantastic book based on well, based on it's it takes the idea of the Wizard of Oz. So you don't have to like the Wizard of Oz. You you just read a good story, but it takes that idea and it's it's like let's give them guns and put them in this sort of strange technological futuristic world and have at it and I, you know i don't normally i'm not normally big on adaptations like that but this one just and this isn't only because i'm a friend of eric weathers uh zeb who i don't know if i've met is a fantastic writer he's building a great world there and uh, i'm a I'm expecting really big things out of the second book, which is still um, funding at the moment. I read uh, Bronze Star by Mike Barron, you can't which go wrong was with Pat Broderick. phenomenal. Yeah. And I'd, I'd never known Pat, uh, his art. Um, He's doing a very so that was my Mike first. Thomas. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. And that was, an, that was an amazing book. Um, what else have I read recently that was really good? Oh, I, I read my first Aaron Lepresti book. I oh, read Wraith, Wraith of God, God was, uh, which was I I was, was kind so of in awe of. Yeah. Um the oh, yeah. art and the story. And he's a really good writer. That's yeah. that's that's the what I love to see. You know, I get excited about the art. Um uh, like everyone does. Well, you know it's gonna be great art when you get in an hour and little presty book. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, but um, and the, not to be mean. But the art, I mean, the writing, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't expect this because yeah. he's known for, known, 
as a writer. And and I I, I got this up here, fiendish. I, I, I didn't know who fiendish. he was. I didn't know anything about I just heard fiendish. And I, I told her to her face. I said, I didn't want to get your book because the title <laughs> is an adjective. Fiendish just drives me nuts, you know, the title. But I backed down when I saw the art, and I'm so glad. I got – I'm like – I'm a gushing fanboy of Fiendish right now, you know. She, yeah, you know, I wasn't. I I'm, I've known Rainy since she first, uh, you know, turned up in the scene, um, asking to come on to promote her book, and I didn't back it then either. And I, for two or so years, I haven't backed it. And then finally, I I was helping her out with some shipping, and I said, "Hey, I'm going to give you some money. Send me a couple of copies so I can finally read your book." And I agree. the The first book was solid, not great, and then the second book just I was just completely blown away that she had advanced so much. And now I'm really looking forward to right. what she's going to do with yeah, that. I, world. I didn't get the first book until the second book came out. So I kind of forget which one happened in which, you know what I mean? Cause I, read yeah, the yeah, book yeah. I and I, 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 again, I'm a Tolkien fan. So I love the whole world building. Yes. I love that she's making yeah. up her own language and everything. And, and I love that she's using her own races. So it's like, you know, like like I read Elf Quest, I'm like, that's not how the elves work, but I like it anyway. You know, but by Wendy Peeney, it's if you're going to use elves, Tolkien defined elves in, in my mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I ever write a fantasy book, I can't use elves because they have to be different, and then they're not elves because whatever. But I love that Reenie made up her own races and and like she didn't back down from sensitive topics. I was I was really impressed. That part really hit me harder than I thought. Yes, I would be I was, hit I was reading shocked. her book. And it was shocking. It was shocking. Yes. And and it was really good storytelling because it's like, wow, even your main characters that we're supposed to have sympathy for have really what I would consider, you know, really kind of pretty backwards views on this stuff. But that's right. the world that they but grow up, the grew up in. in. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is like, how, this is like now really, that RJ's really not really how wrong. bad was Thomas Valiant? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Thomas Valiant. The calculator. So much. I, I love Thomas Valiant so much. I stole his artist. I was, you know, just talking with our uh, Renzo earlier. What is it? I back finished twice to get the. Oh, yeah, there Renzo you go. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I got 2.5 waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, another one you might not be aware of, which I love is called cryptidnals. It's no. by a, um, a, a team down there on the border. So they're sort of, I think some of them are in Mexico. Some of them are just right there on the border. Cryptidnals. I think most of them are in America, but uh, it's called 656 Comics, and they've done a bunch of titles, but the standout one for me is Cryptidnals. They originally crowdfunded it as a as the full thing, and now they're releasing it uh, you know, through the direct market into stores as individual issues. And oh, it cool. is it's about cryptids. Yeah. And it's about this cryptid war and this woman that gets pulled into it. And the art is this sort of I haven't really seen anything like it. It's it's very kind of scratchy and it's all black and white. I know nothing about this. You know, I, I can't claim to to know everything <laughs> that's going on. So I do get excited. Oh, no, that's why I thought I would bring it up because it was probably my favorite book two years ago. I thought they just absolutely blew it out of the water. It was such a, a really fun, interesting story. And I'm so happy that they are finding success out there in the direct market with it um and yeah i shout about it whenever i can and it's it's got uh even though it's in black and white ollie one of the guys who who uh is in the team he did these he did he worked he did the colors on these covers that are amazing and yeah i i can't recommend cryptidinals enough i think it's a it's a uh mexican manga says benjamin i like that mexican manga Okay. They should own that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. You know, I, I I have an hour commute to work and an hour commute home, and that's why I, I I look up stuff. You know, and yeah. You know. If if you're into that, they're they're really into that um sort of that spooky, creepy kind of uh, story um with the, with these with these beasts that are all you know everywhere has a little legend of some right a creature a that monster, stalks yeah. the the forests and it's all about that uh, oh, wow this sounds right up my alley i you know again i can't claim to to to, to know everything that's going on you know every time i talk about this i i talk about brian bowles wolf and batsy which i'm a big fan of mm -hmm. you know he's a great guy tonic bowl's got saving the world which is as offbeat as tonic bowl himself you know <laughs> he, he he's he's a uh 
A character. Uh, yeah, a character. That's a good way to put it. Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm really liking these recommendations. It's a great book. It's Cryptids vs. Creepy. Okay. And yeah. I'm getting more and more into horror comics lately. I you know, as a kid, it was all superheroes, and if it wasn't superheroes, I wasn't interested. But yeah, me too. But now I'm not I, I have read some horror, but I'm more into the fantasy side of stuff now and sci-fi. I haven't yet found a sci-fi comic that I love in the same way that I love sci-fi movies, though. Um, but maybe I just haven't read enough. Now, now I'm now I'm looking back over everything in the, in, the, in my forty years, forty-five years of comic book collecting. If there's a good, I mean, I keep talking about the early Micronauts. That Marvel is releasing an omnibus. Get get the early Michael Golden, Bill Mantlo first twelve issues of, of Micronauts. It it. It's definitely derivative of Star Wars, but put yourself in the mm -hmm. eye of, of, of a six-year-old kid. Oh my God, it was, it was <laughs> the most amazing thing. Yeah. Fantasy European. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I I need I need to get two more subscribers to my to my email list to get on Michael Bancroft's <laughs> channel to, to launch my comic. I'm at 98, guys. <laughs> two away. Excellent. I'm two away. Oh, and I also wanted to say uh People, you know, in, in some of my chats, there would be Bogun Run, Bogun Run, and people, next thing you know, and, and oh, I, was yeah, like, yeah. I, I had no idea what that was, and I started to panic. You could see it the very first time I had it, and I'm like, <laughs> and the hell people, is like, this? It was sending me messages. It's a good thing. It's 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 Michael Bancroft sending people over to watch. I was like, okay, I, I, I thought something was going on that I just did not understand. Well, I didn't understand, but I thought it was a bad thing. <laughs> So thank you. Uh, another two books that I read now, these are quite different, but they're also fantasy. Is um, uh, Nick Patara's Axe Wielder John? Okay. I found that was very cool in a really unusual way. It's it's not like anything else that I'd ever read. Um, it's this sort of larger than life, brightly color. Well, she's is it more pastely? Anyway, it's colorful fantasy world of this. Uh, this you know big dude with a massive scar down his face and then as well and this one is the, the this one is is interesting is groken by kenneth roquefort yeah that and is i remember the first time i read it i was completely lost i was like i don't know what's happening i don't know who all these characters are I got one um, sub one person signed up. One more. One more. Oh, <laughs> one more. We got 44 people in the chat. One more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you know, Kenneth does such eye bleedingly good art. I was yes. like, I'm I'm in no matter what because I want to support him and his art. But I remember the first time I read the book, I was it was just too much. It was this overload of world and characters, and I didn't know how any of them connected. And then I, I read these. Um, he's got these little ash cans. And they're sort of like the key to unlocking the whole story. And I didn't realize that. So I read them and now I reread Groken 1. I'm going to go reread Groken 2 after I get some more work done um, later this week. Um, and I'm all in now because I actually feel like I know the world a bit now. And it is just like a bit like with Rini. He's creating a whole new world. Right. New. I don't know. Are they races? Are they beasts? I don't know what they are. They're weird. It's like, it's like the dark crystal and... Um, you know, those old 80s fantasy movies, like what was that one with Tom Cruise in it? And uh, and Minority. Willow and all these weird things. No, 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 no. The one with the devil, you know, that big red devil. I can't remember oh, the legend. name of the legend. Yeah, it's stuff like that. With, with but I it's, it's that new. No, I, yeah. I, it is legend, but I thought Nicole Kidman was in it. No, but and I was gonna no, that was you. uh that was uh, Days of Thunder. <laughs> oh, I, I was going to ask you if you could take her back, please. She, you know, she's overstayed her welcome. It's gotten a bit weird, hasn't she? Yeah. Oh, she. Every time my wife and I go to the movies, she she does this like intro, like welcome to AMC theaters. She looks does she? like, oh my god, so, so much plastic surgery. You know, mm. you, you know that last scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind when the, the it opens up and the aliens come walking out. I swear <laughs> to God, they're all related to Nicole Kidman. You know, and she's very tall too. I think so. It's sort of she's. She, it's just like you know, you know, like I, I saw I, her I, in Australia. Did you ever see that movie Australia with Hugh Jackman? No, and uh, that was when I was like, I think this is probably the last time I'm going to watch Nicole Kidman. She's looking a little 
Yeah, unusual. she looks. And it, yeah, that was 20 years ago. She's invoking the uncanny valley and she's a real human. You know, <laughs> not, a, not a good thing. Yeah. 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 Ladies need to learn to age gracefully like us. us There's men. nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with, 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 with like with aging. You know what I think? Men can do it. You know, and I, 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 I do agree with you. You know, what's her name? There's a country. There's a country Western American act and she had gray hair. And I, I just find her stunningly beautiful, you, you know, and she, and uh, Andy McDowell doesn't get any work done. Oh my God. What a beautiful woman. Jennifer and, and Connelly. Had, I don't know if she's had work done, but she looks, she looked, yeah. Like well, she, she was just pretty good. In the, jeans, you know what I mean? In like Top Gun Maverick, you know, but she looks like she's 50 something and yeah. she looked great compared to some of these women that look like aliens and a young look, Yeah. So any anything you you want to say? I, it's ten o'clock here, and I I gotta wake up for work at four thirty in the morning. So. Uh, just uh, if you haven't yet, go check out the Lucent at thelucentcomic.com. I'm about I've just finished all the line art finally, and I've got about uh, twenty pages left to color. But they're at they're all of them about eighty to ninety percent finished. So we're looking at for starting fulfillment in uh, a couple of months. So oh, um, that was my next question because uh, I, I, I'm embarrassed to admit that I, I, I missed your first campaign. So I, I pledged, you know, for the, the catch up tier or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. So I, I can't wait because when you when you tease the art and, and then I forget that you're doing it all. And I my first reaction, I actually wrote this out on Twitter a few times. Who's your artist? That guy's. Oh, yeah. He's doing it himself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I'm the everyman, and so that's why things go a little slower, right? Ever in Lucent World because I can't stack artists, you know, I can't have someone working on different things at different times because it's me, and I've only got one good drawing hand. Um, so yeah, but uh, very good, very close now, very exciting, uh, and yeah, I, I can't wait to sort of get this thing out there and see what people think about it. Yeah, looks good, can't wait, I'm excited, but thanks, thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, come on. One more. One, one more. One more. I need one more. Don't, we, <laughs> don't make me beg. Don't make me beg. But it'll happen. It'll happen. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. But thanks a lot. I, I, I'm sorry we scared away RG. What do you think it was? It's probably probably you. We didn't let him get an ed, a word in edgewise. So it's, he probably it's, just. It's funny. I do feel ended. bad. And I message him after every day because I talk so much. And I, I just think it's he's not he's not a a, a, a pushy guy. So. I'm like RJ. I'll I'll be quiet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But he's like, no, I didn't, I enjoy listening. But he is. He he's a, he's a listener, and he's always. And then he'll throw out like a, a, a such a well thought out sentence based on everything that everybody's been saying for an hour. You know. Oh yeah, he's a genius. Yeah, undeniably, he's a, he's the smartest guy in the room, especially yeah. on comics history and the what the what the social justice and everything like that. Like he knows more. We than did anyone. it. We did it. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> we got the hundredth subscriber. Yeah. Excellent. Well yeah, done. Yeah. R RJ's a G. I'm the guy that has to touch the fire six times because I'm like, yeah, it was hot last time. Right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Australians are British migrants. Just like, and people forget. Yeah, people always joke about Australians were founded by like it was a penal colony. So was the United States. You know, the United States, the troublemakers, you know, the, the religious freaks and, and, and the criminals. At one point, they would, if like women got arrested for prostitution, they said, we'll let you go free if you promise to go to America and marry, you know, a colonist. Yeah, wow, didn't know that. And yeah. as well, it is a bit of a meme as well. Uh, you know, the, 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 the convicts made up probably 20% of the population that was sent over there the rest were it was just like in america people were went moved out there to have a better life you know there was an op there was opportunity out there where there wasn't in england anymore they, they say in the original chesapeake bay colony in, in the united states one of the early colonies three out of five people died in the first year which begs oh, the question man. how bad was england that <laughs> well it seemed pretty overcrowded and crazy uh, they were sending people over here just for stealing bread and stuff like that so yeah. they were trying to get rid of them well all, all, when oliver cromwell was in charge of england 
he, he sent over half the population of Ireland to the United States as slaves. You know, like, you know, everybody talks about the slave thing in, in, in America and it was horrible and everything. But we always forget that, you know, the terms like a redheaded stepchild that that came from the slave master banging. Really? His, his Irish slave. And now you have that. a redheaded step that you're embarrassed with. So you, you, know, <laughs> you, you slap it in her. and the paddy wagon. You know what the paddy wagon was? That was the police going around up all the Irishmen. To, you know, get the paddy wagon. All the paddies. The, yeah. You oh, get there the you go. You know, we, no, we forget know that. The, the Irish. And it was funny because a guy was arguing with me like, oh, no, the Irish weren't treated as cattle, uh, chattel slaves. And he came to work with a book the next day. And, of course, I took the book out of his hand and I was reading it during coffee break and lunch break. And, and I underlined the Irish were treated as chattel slaves. I said, you didn't even read your own goddamn book. You know, yeah. Hey, no. not, not, not that we're better off because we're also bad to the to the white people. But the point is, you know, America was found was 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 founded by the refuge of of Europe. You know? So we got yeah. that standing with us, Australian brother. <laughs> <laughs> so I again, I'll talk for another year and a half when I should be going to bed. So any anything you that want to say? Uh, now that's it. I said my pace. Let's. uh I'll let you wrap it up and head to bed. I, I got nothing else to say. I, you know, I feel bad that we chased RJ off. I always do, though. But nah, thanks a lot. I, I I can't wait to see your book. It does look outstanding. All, all kidding aside, when, you, whenever man. whenever you post art, I'm like, oh, man. And I check. Did I forget to back this? Because sometimes I think I back stuff, and then I see everybody's getting it, and I'm about to write an angry email. Where's mine? And then I realize I never backed it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the good thing about having a store is – whatever i have it'll you know it'll be it'll be there and it'll be available to buy whenever you want it so oh there you even go. if you do miss out you're about to get it soon anyway i'm trying to look at your link my, my moderators left oh here we go and we'll leave at this check out your the loosencomic.com and thanks a lot michael yeah, always a pleasure to talk to you i i really enjoy talking to you you Me know too. you're a refreshing pleasure in, in in what has become a crazy uh hobby these days it's a, it's a it's a mad world out there yeah 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 unfortunately you're right All right but thanks a lot everybody bye bye <laughs>